friends, welcome back. Today's video is going to be a standalone review for Five Little Indians by Michelle Good. Sorry, my plant's gonna be uh, waving its little arm at you throughout this video probably. But uh, yes, Five Little Indians. I finished this book a couple of days ago and it impacted me emotionally so, so much. And I really wanted to talk a little bit more about it. This book follows the story of five people who were children in a residential school in Canada and have now grown up to be adults. Um, and you watch in like a non-linear fashion their stories from where they are as adults, how they are navigating their life, navigating their relationships, and then also flashing back to the residential school. They were all at the same residential school, but they weren't all necessarily friends. Um, most of them kind of like knew about each other or maybe they were friends, but uh, yeah, they all were at the residential school at the same time and had like varying levels of knowing each other. As they get older and once they leave the residential school, their paths um, kind of cross and you see how the residential schools have affected their lives as adults. Each book is told from a different perspective. So for instance, we start off with, I think, Kenny. Yes, we start off with Kenny. We have a chapter about Kenny and his life and where he is right now, um, his emotions, how he's dealing with everything. Um, and then it moves on to the next character. What I found so amazing about this book is that it doesn't actually talk in graphic detail about what happened at the residential schools. Um, I think many of us know what was going on at the residential schools. I know over the last couple of years, fortunately, it's been more in the news and there's been like more acknowledgement of what happened in these residential schools. If you don't know, I'll leave some links down below if you want to learn a little bit more. Um, so I think a lot of people have an idea of what was going on at the residential schools. And I think that it would be uh, very understandable, I guess, to write a book about this topic and describe what was happening at the residential schools in kind of like graphic detail, right? Because I think books like this where people are dealing with trauma and with abuse, part of the reason that these books are so difficult to read is because you are actually reading what happened to these characters, right? And I think that makes it very emotional and like gut-wrenching in a way because you're you're being exposed to what was going on in pretty graphic detail. However, this book doesn't do that. Um, and I think it's it's a testament to how amazing this book is that it was able to evoke so much emotion in me, even though it didn't have these graphic details. When you have the chapters or the moments where they are going back into the residential school time and you know talking about what was going on with the different children, it does allude to what is happening, but it doesn't really explain in graphic detail. You just you kind of know what is going on, unfortunately, because like we know the history of what happened at these schools. Um, but it doesn't focus on that. It focuses so much more on like the lasting impacts um, for these kids and how what happened to them as children, how that affects them now as adults and how that affects them emotionally, like within their own, like their inner demons and how it affects the relationships that they're trying to have, both like romantic and friendships and all the different ways that their lives now are much more difficult, right? Because they've gone through this emotional and physical trauma as children and then, you know, when they turn 16, for instance, like one character, she turned 16, she was essentially given a bus ticket and like $5 or something and put on a bus to Vancouver. And it's like, well, good luck, right? And like, where's your support system? These kids who were snatched away from their families at like five or six years old, now we're just like shipped off into the world, right? So they, they don't have this sort of like good support system, at least not right off the bat. Um, and yeah, you just really, you really get into the minds of these characters and how what happened to them affects them now. And I think it is such an amazing way to gain insight, but also to gain empathy, because I think it's, it's one thing to read about what was going on and sort of like, be like, okay, well, this obviously was a very bad thing that happened in these residential schools, but then to take that and to see how that progresses throughout the life of a person and how that affects essentially every aspect of their life. Um, all this like un, unhealed trauma that they went through. Um, yeah, I think it, it's, it's such an amazing way to gain insight and to gain empathy. And I think because we didn't really have graphic descriptions, it was very focused on the inner workings of these characters. And you really got into the mind and sort of like the complexities of what this trauma did to them as adults. Astounding, astounding, just like such an astounding book. Another thing I appreciate about this book is how realistic it felt in the sense that not all the characters got a happy ending because I think sometimes we can say oh well like you know in this case specifically like oh you're no longer in a residential school like everything is okay now and that's definitely not the case and a lot of times it's not going to be the case for someone's entire life right and so you had characters in here that had sort of like happier endings but you also had characters who did not have happy endings and I think that that shows 
the different ways that these things can affect people throughout the course of their lives. People don't always get the support that they need or the healing that they need in order to kind of overcome the events that happened. The end of the book also has, um, I guess like the Canadian government wanting now to speak to these survivors of the residential schools in order to give their accounts. And you're watching as these people who have spent so many years trying to suppress a lot of these emotions and these memories of what they went through. Now they're being asked to, in like very great detail, recall to essentially a stranger what happened to them at these schools. And, you know, I think as, once again, like this is fiction, but we all know that this is like very much based in, in reality. Um, I think it's, you know, as like the public, we can say, oh, like it's really good. We need to have these accounts so that, you know, people can get justice and all this kind of stuff. But I don't think we always think about what that does to the actual people that survived this trauma, right? You're being forced to relive this and to give your account. Um, and yeah, and I, I really like that the author covered that as well because it's like, oh, well now we're getting sort of like retribution for it. But that retribution is also having a very big impact on the lives of the people that went through these residential schools. This for me was an easy five out of five star read. I think that this should be mandatory reading for anyone that lives in Canada. If you live in Canada, I would highly, highly recommend checking this book out. It's like I said, it doesn't really have graphic details of what happened in these schools. It just deep dives really, really, really intensely into the emotions and the interpersonal relationships of these characters who went through these schools and now how that's impacting the rest of their lives and in what ways they're able to sort of deal with it and in what ways they are unable to deal with it and also how it impacts everybody differently. Also, I was just reading the back of this and this is a debut novel. <laughs> All right, Michelle, good. Let me show you guys her author photo. You guys know I love author photos. Um, debut novel. That's astounding, but let me just read you this. In this stunning debut novel, Michelle Good opens a compassionate, devastating window into the human cost of colonialism. Through rich, interwoven stories, Michelle shows the suffering, trauma, and injustice Canada inflicted on tens of thousands of children, their families, communities, and nations, and honors the strength, beauty, and courage of those who never should have had to endure it. It is a staggeringly powerful book, a vital read. That is from Jessica McDiarmid. Fully agree. If you have read this book, please let me know what you thought down below. If you haven't read this book, I would highly, highly recommend reading it. I think that it really sheds a light on something that happened and not just on like the event, but on the, the after effects, the ripple effects of those events. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, for liking, for commenting, for subscribing. It all means the world to me and I will see you again in the next one.